What's up, Hope at Home? We are in our final week, week five, of developing healthy habits when it comes to the way we view our money, um, the way we view our finances, the way we invest in our future, the way we build generational wealth, um, and what that looks like for you and I. And, you know, habit number five that I want to really drive home for us today is about putting God first. Like making sure that when it comes to our finances, that we understand the source of our finances and that we place God first and we give him the honor and the glory um, for giving us the ability to build, to amass, to, to develop, to grow, to work, to, to make, um, and that, that it's important. And so what we're talking about today is probably a, a, a conversation. It's vital to our relationship with God and putting him first in our lives, but we're, we're talking about tithing. And, you know, tithing is a a biblical principle that often is misunderstood. Um, it's probably, you know, in Christian circles, something that people have a lot of apprehension about. I know a lot of my pastor friends, they don't even like to talk about it because it makes people feel uncomfortable. You know, I, I like the concept of tithing, not because uh, I want your money, because I say it to you all the time. Um, generosity, I believe, is not what God wants from you, but it's what he wants for you. Open-handed living, a lifestyle where you put God and others first, where self-control and sacrifice and purposeful planning become a normal part of your experience when it comes to your finances. But first, for us to talk about tithing, you have to have an understanding of what it means. A tithe simply means tenth, right? So it's an ancient biblical concept for the children of Israel and even before them all the way back to Abraham before they were even the children of Israel to return a tenth of their income to the the local house of worship the local church you know and, and for them it would have been the temple or in later times the synagogue as we know it the storehouse right uh, it's it's about returning the first 10 percent of our income to God's local church the church in which you worship um, whether it be in person or online, the way that you connect with God and where you're being, you know, uh, where you're being schooled and educated and, and disciplined in the things of God, that you would do that. Now, the reason I say return, I return my tithe. I don't pay my tithes. I return my tithe because everything I have is God's. He's entrusted it to me. I'm simply a manager. And so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm putting seed back in from after the harvest. God gave me the ability to do something. And so with that, I've made investments. I've used my sweat equity to make an investment. And then I get a paycheck from that sweat equity. Then I take that money and the first tenth of it, the first 10% of it, I sow back into the kingdom of God because I want to honor God with my wealth. And the reason I want to do that is because my ability to amass that wealth comes from him. So this concept of tithing is, is ancient. Leviticus chapter 27, uh, verse 30, it says, A tithe of everything from the land, whether it's grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It's holy to the Lord. Tithing is more than just a financial transaction. It's a spiritual discipline. It's an act of worship. Returning the first tenth to God um, is a way that we demonstrate our trust in his provision and our commitment to honor him with our resources. So tithing is about you know, giving God my first and my best so that he can bless the rest. I, I like that because it's poetic, um, so it's easy to remember. I want to give God my first and my best so he can bless the rest. Proverbs 3, chapter 9 and 10 says, Honor God with your wealth, the first fruits of all your crops, and then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. The whole concept of the first fruits or the tithe is that you're putting God first. And so, Again, I don't know how you do it. It's a, it's a heart thing more than a strategy thing. But it's you know for you, for you to believe something and it begin to shape how you, who you're becoming, so that it shapes your behavior. It's important sometimes for it to be strategic, at first. And so when we say first fruits, uh, if you're new to this concept or you're stepping out in faith to begin to become a tither, um, maybe you've been you know, living in a world where you kind of tip God, that's cool. Like you come to church and you enjoy the service. And so you drop a 20 in and you're like, yay, God, um, that's wonderful. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but, you know, the difference is, is that you're coming 
When you tip, it's because someone gave you good service. When you tithe, it's because you see yourself as the servant. Do you see the difference? That I'm honoring God with what he's given me. I'm not just giving him a tip because he made a delicious meal for me and now I feel better. I'm honoring him saying, I'm going to give you back. I'm going to sow seed back into the ministry in which I'm receiving development and growth and fruitfulness because I believe in it and I want others to have this opportunity. And so he says that in, you know, in Proverbs that your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will burn with new wine. So there's this promise of what you sow, you will reap. So when you give into, then you get back, that God blesses you. And so part of the tithe is this supernatural commitment to a lifestyle of blessing that I give, God gives back, I give again, God gives back as he blesses me, I bless others, and it becomes this cyclical, um, you know, I can't outgive God sort of thing. Tithing provides um, an opportunity for God's work to happen through the local church. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, he says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. So, you know, through tithing, we invite God's blessing and provision into our lives, but we actively participate in the work that he's doing through the church. And, you know, the, the point of that is, is if you don't believe, and I'm just going to be point blank here, if you don't believe in what your local church is doing, then you probably need to find yourself somewhere where you can believe in it. Like, if you can't, and pardon the uh, maybe harshness of this language, if you can't put your money where your mouth is, like if you can't tithe or at least start working towards that reality, because some of us is a new concept. So you're like, boy, I got to adjust my whole life to do that because I live way beyond my means and I'm not acting my wage. And so I'm going to have to build my life and reorganize my life and budget and change and it's going to take some time. And so I'm going to start with one or two or five percent and I'm going to work myself up to that 10 percent. That's beautiful. That's awesome that you're learning and striving and growing to put God first in your finances. But if you can't believe in what your local church is doing, whether it's Hope City Church and, and your pastor or others, then, then you should be somewhere else where you can believe in that. Because why would you want to be somewhere where you don't believe in what's happening? Like we're sowing seeds into it because we believe in it. We're giving towards it because we believe in the life change that's going to happen with our kids' ministry. We believe the life change is going to happen through our local outreach and through, through our world missions. We believe that you know, what's happening with clean water projects and champions clubs and food programs and, and church planting um, all over the world as we've been planting seeds in, in different places and spaces. And we believe in house builds and we believe in, in, you know, like working to help with food insecurity locally through kids who don't have enough food to eat on the weekends and making sure that, you know, at least we are a few times a year gathering together and rallying and, and giving of ourselves through shoes and gifts in kind and serving the people around us tithing teaches me that i need to put god first in my mind's eye i'm sort of transported to this ancient of days in israel and i see fields abundant crops swaying in the breeze and and ready for harvest and i see the devoted farmer as he's selecting the finest portion of his produce and he's offering it to god and i'm struck in my imagination by this farmer's act of trust and gratitude, acknowledging that he wouldn't even have a harvest if it wasn't for the blessings that God gave him in the seed. And so he planted the seed and he tended the soil and he did all the work, but that God performed the magic of the seed. It was the supernatural hand of God that allowed the seed to sprout and the seed to grow. And we've lost sight of that because we've exchanged, you know, farming and agrarian reality for you know, commerce when it comes to paper money or worse yet, digital currency. And in Deuteronomy chapter 14, 23, we see this. The purpose of the tithe is to teach you to always put God first in your life because God already put you first. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. In other words, if you put God first, God will continue to put you first. Suddenly, as I imagine this farmer i see the scene shift i was thinking about this this week and and the scene the scene shifts to the prophet malachi who you know he's confronting this wayward nation who's now forgotten who god is and in his voice 
this, this echo of urgency challenges the people that have been neglecting the tithes and the offerings. And, and I'm, I'm captivated by the dialogue of Malachi chapter 3 when he starts to say to them, you know, like, guys, are you, is it possible that you're robbing God? Is it possible that you're consuming the seed? If you consume all of it and you don't sow any seed for the next season, then how will they be blessing? How will there be miracle? How will there be a future for your kids and your people if everything we have, we just consume it all now? Tithing teaches us to not just be consumers. Tithing teaches us to put God and his people first so that there could be a future for his people. Malachi 3, 8, 9, will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. How, you ask? How do we rob God? In the tithes and the offerings. And because of that, you're under a curse. And it's not that God is punishing you. It's that you, a curse is the opposite of blessing. Blessing comes when you're obedient to God's law. Curse is the, the vacuum of blessing not being there in your life. The whole nation of you, he says. And he's speaking as God. He says, because you're robbing me. The prophet's words remind us that this lack of blessing is not because of vengeful punishment, but rather a natural consequence of us not putting God and his rightful place in our finances. And again, this causes me to feel a mix of emotions because, uh, you know, I'm thinking about this ancient farmer and Malachi and what it means to have first fruits and to put God first and, and to see that God doesn't open the floodgates and pour out blessings upon us, right? But then I think about like the teachings of Jesus. Matthew 23, 23. What sorrow awaits teachers and religious of the religious law, you Pharisees, you hypocrites. And so what he says to them is he says, I don't want tithing to just simply be something you do, but I want it to be something that comes from a heart of obedience. Because tithing, honestly, isn't about the condition of your wallet. It's about the condition of your heart. He says, you're careful to tithe even on the tiniest of your income um, from your herb garden, but you ignore the more important aspects of life like justice, mercy, faith. You should tithe, yes, but don't neglect the more important things. In other words, the tithing is the baseline by which we sow seeds for the future. It is not a badge of honor. It's what we're supposed to be doing in our regular lives. Generosity comes... You know, like, and honestly, in some ways, Jesus is saying tithing isn't being generous. Tithing is doing the least I could do to honor God for all that He's done for me. Let me give it to you in a way that maybe would make some more sense for you because money's hard sometimes, right? If I love my wife, I put her first. Everybody understands that. But I think it's just assumed by everyone, including me and her, that if I love her, I'm just not going to cheat on her. So I don't get a prize for being a not cheater, right? My wife celebrates my diligence and my hard work because I put her and my family first in the choices that I make, not because I didn't cheat on her. Think about the tithe maybe in that context, that it's the standard of care for those of us who claim to put God first in our life that we would also put him first in our finances. Tithing builds my faith in God. He says, test me, Malachi 3.10. This is the only verse that I'm aware of that there is an obedience commandment that also comes with a promise. He says, test me um, and see that I don't throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you won't have enough room for it. When we put God first in our finances, what we ultimately do is we align ourselves with his divine order and that we experience the blessings that flow from the abundance that God has for us. Tithing enables us to support God's work in the kingdom through our local church by providing resources for ministry, outreach, for caring for those who are in need, the hurting, the broken, and the poor. But it also teaches us to prioritize God in every aspect of our life. Tithing cultivates an attitude of gratitude and a dependence on him. My hope for you, my prayer for you, is that you would step out in faith and trust God with your finances. That you would develop these healthy habits that we've been discussing that build upon each other. 
God promises to pour out blessings upon you for those of you who are faithful in this area. And so as I close out this series together, I just want to pray over all of us one last time. God, may our commitment to you place you in first place over our finances and let our finances reflect our love, our gratitude, our obedience that we have for you. Lord, may you bless us abundantly as we honor you with our resources and may our lives be living testimonies, stories of your provision, your faithfulness, your grace in the name of Jesus who faithfully and humbly gave himself for us. We pray this. Amen.